If you are trying to use ClickUp dashboards, it's high time you figure out how exactly to use widgets to your advantage. And if you don't know what dashboards in ClickUp are, then you're probably not ready for this video yet. And I highly recommend you watch this one instead, where I go through all of the basics as to what dashboards are and how you can use them and how not to screw things up. It's, it's a good little video. Just watch that one up there first. Come back, we'll be here. Now, if you are already pretty familiar with ClickUp, just hang tight. We're gonna be flipping over my screen very soon and we'll be going through some of the top widgets that you can be using in your ClickUp dashboard. Before we flip over, I wanna point out that this video was a request by you guys. When I did my video two weeks back talking about how to use dashboards, that one that I just linked up, um, I asked you whether you'd rather me cover more about dashboard use cases or more about dashboard widgets. And you guys kind of were tied more or less, but we skewed towards the widget side. And so here we are with widgets. If you like these kinds of videos, of course, thumbs up, subscribe, all that stuff. So that's enough. Let's dive in. So here we are in a ClickUp dashboard. And as you can see, I got to this by clicking on the mosaic slash dashboard looking icon and just creating a dashboard. What we're going to be talking through today are the widgets and specifically we're going to be going through the top four tabs of widgets. I thought it'd be a little bit too much to go through all of them and even still this will be a pretty long video but we're going to be going through all of the featured widgets, the custom widgets, the sprints, and the status widgets. So these top four sections there are some overlap between them so I've eliminated any duplication and just as a word of warning before I get the comment saying this video is too long there is a timestamp in the description of this video where you can jump to the specific widget that you're interested in learning about and find out more information. Now, this is just kind of a part one to all of the dashboard widgets because I don't want to go crazy with how long this video is. If you would like to see a part two of this dashboard widgets piece, please do put your vote below to let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this. So let's just dive in with this featured area and start showing you what these widgets actually look like. First up is a task list widget, and this looks a whole lot like list view. Um, if you can remember what list view looks like over in the tasks area, basically this pulls in tasks from different areas in your ClickUp and allows you to view them in a different way. Now you'll notice for all of these widgets, I pretty much can click on this expand or full screen button in each one of them. Don't ask me why the interface is different on some of them, um, but or the icons rather. But if I click on this, I can open this up full screen. That's what I'm going to do as I go through these. Just know that that's what I'm doing. I'm not manipulating anything. I'm just expanding the widget we're interested in to full screen. So here we are, we are seeing the task list widget. This looks a whole lot like list view, except when we actually build this widget, we can pull in a variety of locations from throughout our ClickUp workspace. So I could pick some things from one space, one folder, and just start piecing together what exactly I'd like to have pulled into this widget. Whereas normally in list view, it's showing you the stuff within a certain section of the hierarchy. That's where dashboards really let you break outside of the hierarchy mold, because I can pick and choose what things I'd like to pull in. Where you might use this would be something like for a client dashboard, a client service dashboard, where you might want to pull in different projects from all over your workspace that are for the same client and have them all kind of monitored from one dashboard. So here we go. We've got task list. We give it a name. We have this grouped by priority right now, just like when you're actually working in list view, you could group this by a whole bunch of other things like assignee or status. Um, unless I should go with status for now. I can choose, all of these will have the same options pretty much. I can choose to include subtasks, show closed things, um, show things that are in multiple lists and so on and so forth. Even filter things down to just certain types of tasks. I can do all that here, click save and you'll see my um, task list widget is updated. So I'm gonna exit out of that. That's what the task list widget is. It allows you to kind of see your task list in a dashboard. The other area right here is the workload by status widget. Now, I don't know why this one lost its name somehow in, in the process here, so I'm gonna put that back in there. But workload by status is basically doing the same thing as a list view where it's letting you pick and choose different areas and collect all of the data about a task, except it is showing you a pie chart instead. In this case, I am choosing to have a workload by status. So I'm looking at all of the tasks grouped by status. I can kind of manipulate this a little bit by clicking on the legend and hiding certain areas. So maybe I only want to see in progress, want to add to do in there, so on. That is manipulated by turning on the legend and manipulating it there. If I click on settings, once again, I will see what options I have. What locations do I want? Do I want to do everything? Do I want to just hide certain ones? What statuses do I want to show? 
Um, it does not let me group by something else here because it is a workload by status chart. So you're pretty much set in your options. You can choose to turn on subtasks or not, show closed or not. I'll turn on closed for this case. And would I rather see the number of tasks or just the percentage of total? In this case, I'm gonna leave on number because I feel like in most cases that's more helpful than just seeing percentages. So I've turned on closed status and we see now it looks a little bit different. And because I eliminated certain areas, my in progress is gone. Let's go back there and I'm gonna show uh, all locations just so we can get a full picture here. And da da here we go. So now you can get a better sense of what happens when we start manipulating this legend. And once again, we're seeing a little bit of funky stuff around um, the actual legend here, but nonetheless, here we are and we can start uh, looking at our workload by status in different ways. So that is our second widget, our second featured widget that is right here in the second position. The third one we're going to be looking at is calculation here. So calculation, I mean, I don't really need to explain what this is. It does calculations. Um, the options are not endless. They are somewhat limited in terms of what kinds of calculations you can do. Um, it can also only pull on number fields automatic progress fields, or the other four field types that you were seeing here. So task count is one important one and probably the most common one, but you are a little bit limited here. So you're not going to be able to do calculations around due dates or anything like that, which is a very common request. I know many people are trying to do with this right now. So as of this point, you're a little bit SOL on that. Um, you can choose a unit of measure. So for example, if we were to use our number field called numbers, maybe we wanted to make it a sum or a median and we wanted to make it a dollars. You know, maybe that custom field is associated with a dollar amount. So we want to have that unit on it. We can do that. Or maybe we wish want to do something like task count in any location and our unit could be tasks and so on. Luckily, I already have one created here. So you can see what it looks like to have that unit added tasks written below. I have this created under settings where we can see we're using calculation as the name. The location is just pulling everything. We're looking at task count as our values. Our unit of measure is custom. So I just wrote the word tasks in there. I'll make that lowercase. Um, I'll switch it to right. So that way it's not showing up below the number. It's showing up to the right of the number. And I can choose to, again, the same filtering and inclusions I can choose on any other widget. Click save. We're seeing this reload. And now we have tasks, the label to the right based on that setting and it's showing me 56 tasks. So I now have it counting subtasks. So that is the calculation widget. Obviously this one you can manipulate in a lot of different ways, um, but there you go, calculation widget. The next one is the fourth one in the order here in featured, which is time reporting. This is, <laughs> it's like your timesheet. Basically um, it shows time being tracked uh, by person by default and it shows for a period of time. So this one actually has a lot of different settings than what you see elsewhere. You see even the icons are different, which makes me think that perhaps this was updated when they updated the time tracking features down here just recently. When you click on the settings or if you go to create a new one in the time reporting, you'll see that the options look a little bit different. Once again, you have the name for your widget. That's nothing new. And for the record, you can change that anywhere just by typing that in. But what else do we have here? This is where things get interesting. So you can choose a time range for time reporting, which is pretty handy if you're using this for a timesheet of some kind. Grouping is another useful function. So if you want to group by user, which is pretty common, but then maybe you also want to group by space or folder or list to know where people are tracking their time, you can do that here. Um, you can use the built-in labels feature if you're using that when you're tracking your time, the, the tags you can basically add on to your time tracking. If you use those, those would show up here. I haven't in this workspace. You can also choose what people are being tracked and whether you care about billable versus non-billable. Um, time estimates is another option and filtering once again. So I'm going to click save there. I haven't changed too much, but I just want to show you to link back to that time tracking here. Um, to really take advantage of all of the time reporting features in the widget, you'd probably want to be using these labels and you'd also want to be using billable versus non-billable. I've put a separate video out about how I use the time tracker in ClickUp. I'll put the link to that around this. I don't really use either of these features personally, so the demo space here isn't using those either. But if you did use them, you'd be able to report on them here. So here you can see estimated time versus the tasks or estimated time I attached to the tasks assigned to me versus the tracked time I did. Um, and if I scroll down, I can actually see them grouped into the different areas. So these are the list names because that's what I have things grouped by. And if I expand that further, I will see any notes I have relative to each piece of time tracking. So there we are. Um, that is the time tracking area. And yeah, these are showing us the same thing. I'm sorry, I don't have more than one person tracking time on here. This is just a dummy space, but you get the idea that is time reporting. Um, while I'm not going to go into all of them, there is a whole time tracking section here, which basically shows you 
same thing in different formats. So whether it's just billable, whether it's a full time sheet, whether it's um, the older for version of time tracking, this whole time tracking session would probably be interesting to you if you found this one interesting. But for now, we're just going to keep moving through. So the next widget, which is probably one of the most popular that my clients really enjoy, is the portfolio widget. So that's again here on Featured. And basically, it allows you to track select sections, much like Task View. You can pick and choose different areas in your um, in your ClickUp workspace and monitor them in different ways. So the default view here, we can see it pulls the list color. So if you use list color in any way, you can have that pull in here. It also pulls in the overall progress, meaning what's your percent completion on that overall list or folder. Scrolling over here, you can see completed tasks, overdue tasks, and the actual general information for each list. It does not apply to the folders since folders cannot have these properties. But you can have a list owner, you can have a list priority level, end date, and start date, which is pretty interesting. You can also add some other custom fields that pull in here as well, such as, I don't know if I have any milestones on any of these dummy ones, but it does tell you some pretty interesting stuff where you can pull off of uh, all of the data in a specific list. So this can be kind of nice. You can see this kind of combines a lot of pieces of other widgets. So this looks a whole lot like the battery chart we're going to look at later. This looks a whole lot like the automatic um, progress or completion that you might see on something like a task list. Oop. And list color is list color. These overdue and completed look a whole lot like the calculation areas that we could calculate or um, some of the other reports you can pull. So we're just going to keep on moving through here to the last three featured widgets. If you go in here, once again, you'll see these last three ones here, tasks by assignee, text block, and chat. These are pretty basic ones. So we're just going to go through them quickly. Task by assignee shows you the tasks. Once again, just like anywhere else in these dashboards, you can choose where it's pulling from. So we could choose which locations, um, you know, modify this as needed. We can choose which assignees we want to pull in. We can choose what we want to group by, which is actually um, stuck as assignee at this point. But if we were just creating a general pie chart, we'd have a little more, more options and all of the general things that you're used to seeing, including percentage. In this case, I think percentage might be a little bit more useful. So I'll turn that on for this one. As we let it load, you'll see that it breaks everything down into who has ownership in that area. Apparently, whatever list I picked is only assigned to me. So let's just go in here and add everything again. These dummy spaces are sometimes funny like that. Um, and you'll see here we are to see a more uh, normal workspace where when I actually hover over something, it'll show me the number of tasks. But when I just look at it generally, it'll show me the percentage completion. Yes, I'm on there twice. That's because I have two accounts under my name. So don't worry, there's no glitch there. Uh, once again, I'm seeing the legend on the bottom that is not on by default. You can turn that on under show legend and that'll just give you that bottom area. What's nice about having legend is it allows you to turn pieces off and just focus on certain relationships. So if I didn't care about Jen and I just wanted to see what are the two different Layla's doing, I could turn that off and get a good sense of that there. So that is the task by assignee. It's a version of a pie chart. It's a default option there. And actually, while we're here, before I move on, I will highlight this little um, clock icon that I don't know if I really pointed out here. It does show you the last time that something was edited, and that can be really handy as well if you want to know when your data was last up to date. As I mentioned in the overview of dashboards video, which I will link above here again, um, you can organize how often your data is refreshed by clicking on this refresh icon. Seems to be by default now it's 30 minutes. I think in the video I actually mentioned it was manual. I don't think that's correct anymore. It seems to be that it defaults to 30 minutes but you can adjust how often your data refreshes here or just force it to refresh by clicking refresh now at any point. These last two widgets are the ones I use most often actually, and they also have nothing to do with tasks. These are pretty freestyle widgets um, used to just add other stuff into dashboards and really allow you to turn dashboards into this collaboration or casual brainstorming area, which can be really, really helpful. So the first one I'll look at is a text box. This basically allows you to create all of the things you would expect in a ClickUp doc, but in just a text widget. So this does not actually create a doc. Um, it looks a lot like a task description, but it allows you to have things like buttons, which normally don't show up in a task description. You are able to just type whatever you want into here. And just like a ClickUp doc or a task description, you'll see all of these slash commands. And like I said earlier, poorly, uh, you get the full array of slash commands here, more than just what you would have in a task description which includes things like your buttons, your embeds, and all of that good stuff. So you can really create whatever you need to here in these task widgets, which are really nice and flexible. So embedding things like YouTube videos can be nice to do here. So if you want to include this video in your dashboard, you could go ahead and do that. And um, yeah, this is what text box do. Just like everywhere else, you can rename them very easily. You can expand them if you want to have more space to really work through things. And you can just type just as you would anywhere else. Um, and yes, the tables are very nice and they are in here now. So 
this is cool. The final section here in the featured area is a chat widget, which works a whole lot like a ClickUp comment or a chat view, except that it is here in a dashboard. Um, when you're using a chat in a dashboard view, the only thing that's really different is that you can no longer assign your chats to people. Whereas in a normal uh, chat or a comment, you could assign things to people. Here you can only mention and do the normal kind of chat functions, but you cannot assign your chats. But otherwise, this works exactly the same as comments or a chat view. As far as I know, I might be missing something, but that's pretty much it. You'll see I use these a lot for things like team check-ins or asynchronous scrums using chat widgets. If you are looking for more information about this, definitely check out the video I just released about how you can use um, dashboards for one-on-one -on -one kind of communications in ClickUp, sort of. Um, I'll put the link to that above this video as well. So that is it for the featured area, all eight of these basic widgets. Hopefully this is helpful to you to see. If this video is valuable to you, please do give me a thumbs up and let me know that this is helpful. I'm going to keep going through the remaining three uh, tabs that I'm going to cover today. And if you would like to see a part two to this video, again, comment that part two. Let me know what you would like to see. If you'd like me to go through each of these, I certainly can. So let's start going through these custom widgets now. Custom widgets are custom widgets. They're just different kinds of charts. They function the same way, but they let you see things in a different way. Um, you will get to these by going to add widget, go to custom, and and see all the custom widgets. Now, some of these are familiar, like these four down here we've already seen. So there's really only going to be four or so uh, different widgets that I'll be highlighting in this point. The first is a line chart. It shows data over a period of time most often or any other unit. So here we'll see, going into here, settings, we will see that right now we have a time range of this month grouped by days. Those are basically our x-axis markers. We have our y-axis being the number of tasks, and we are grouping things by status, showing all of the statuses. Now I could turn on more of those if I wanted to. We'll just do everything. We don't care about closed, perhaps. Oops, we don't care about done. And we could choose to stack our line charts or not. We have a bunch of other options around here, but here we go. We'll load it. And this is our line chart. It's not very pretty because there has not been a lot of activity in this dummy account. Um, but uh, it, hopefully this gives you a good idea about how you can organize your, your stuff into a line chart. But yes, that is our line chart widget. You can imagine there's a lot of possibilities you can do with it, but it's a lot more interesting with more activity in your workspace. All right. So the other one here is bar chart. This again is just a chart. So just like any other chart, the interest level. It depends on how you have things set up. So in this case, I have a bar chart with the X axis being the assignee. I have all assignees included since I only have three and the Y axis. I have the average age of tasks, which is actually pretty interesting. This is a data point that I don't think many of us would think to use because it is relatively new, but I'm actually switch that to hours and I'm going to have it be the age of the tasks by person. And I'm going to have things grouped by status or let's just group by let's group by priority. See if that gives us anything interesting. So what this is going to show me is by person, how long are tasks sitting in their account grouped by hours and actually hours in this case, since we're looking at pretty high numbers, aren't too helpful. Let's go back to days, but this would be a good indication of who is taking a long time to finish things or who is just assigned really long-term tasks. So here we can see, um, Layla number one has <laughs> an average of 45 days of things sitting there and none of her things have any priorities attached. And versus here, we see that the low priority things are sitting for 18 days on average. The no priority things are at 48 days on average. And the total average for Layla number two is 66 days and so on. So this is actually a pretty interesting chart. Again, we are manipulating a bar chart here to get this data. Below that, again, we are following along here in the custom area. We're going to look at a pie chart. We talked about pie chart, I think, by assignee before or by workload before, or we didn't have all of the options to, to customize things. If we create a pie chart from scratch, we can choose to group it by all sorts of things. Um, in this case, I'm going to group it by priority, showing all priorities, and use the value or the thing that determines how big the wedges are to be the quantity of tasks. I could also do average age or um, a custom field, perhaps, that I'd have, but I'm pretty good with this for now. All of the same settings that you're used to seeing in widgets are here. And if I click Save, you can see our beautiful pie chart will show up, showing us all of the, um, the quantity of tasks in percentages by priority level. If I wanted to get rid of those percentages, I would just toggle this off and show the true number, the actual number of tasks in each priority level. Priorities don't seem to be used that often in this workspace. So I'm actually going to flip this back and we're going to put this back to status and show all statuses instead, because I don't think priority has been super helpful. Although neither is status apparently either. All right. So we've got that pie chart, battery chart, same thing. It shows us it's pretty much the same as a pie chart. Actually, it's just showing us it in a linear format. So in this case, we've got this set up as a battery chart that is showing 
things grouped by a custom field, which is interesting. And the value is the average age of the task. Now, I think that gets a little confusing. So let's just put this as number of tasks. We'll let this renew. Da -da -da -da. So we'll show what tasks, what number of tasks have this box checked and which do not have it checked. In this case, the box that we're referring to is a box that I set up. It's a custom field called paid whether paid or not paid. So this could be pretty interesting to look at. I could also just group this by something more traditional, like assignee, show by all assignees, and just look at what um, assignees have, like what's the workload distribution. This would actually look very similar to tasks by assignee in a pie chart. But here we go, seeing the same stuff here. Show that legend, and we can all the same manipulation that we're used to seeing. Wonderful, right? <laughs> and that's the battery chart. So pie chart, battery chart, very similar, just do you prefer circles or rectangles? All right, the last one we already covered, which is calculations, but I just want to show it to you in a different way. Here I have the unit being dollars and the unit label being on the left side, and we have it as a sum. I can flip it to the average, and it's pulling on a custom field called numbers. And um, I could have it include subtasks. I don't think there are any, but there you go. We've already looked at the calculation thing again, but here it is once more if you want to see it. And this all, this does nicely shrink down if you want to have this. Um, you know, to organize your chart in a slightly prettier way, you could go ahead and do that. But that is the second tab then of our dashboard widgets. All right, let's go to number three. Okay, number three is Sprint. So I don't really use much for Sprint methodology myself, so I'm just gonna kind of stumble through these ones and show you what they're he what what is here. I will say that I know most of the Sprint options are only available on the paid plan, so keep that in mind as well. So here we are in the burn up chart widget. This is both showing how much stuff has actually gotten done. Uh, we can give it a name just like before. We can choose what source we want to pull off of, and we want to uh, choose what locations it is pulling data from, our time range, and how we are measuring the amount of work. So time estimates, sprint points, tasks, all of those could be good units of measure. And it'll show us this beautiful chart showing over time where were things at in our process, basically what we scoped in, what could be done, and then what is in a done or closed state. Next up is the burn down widget, which is the amount of work left to do. Basically think of this as like kind of forecasting, but for your workload. Again, we are choosing our source. We are choosing the, the actual locations of data that we're pulling from, our start date, our duration of our sprint, and measuring our amount of work in a certain unit, whether that is number of tasks, estimated time, sprint points, whatever. Um, same settings as what you're used to seeing. And basically it's going to use your current rate to project how long it's going to take you to finish everything. So at our current rate, based on what we just knocked um, off of our to-do list today in this imaginary workspace, we're actually projected to finish all of our tasks come August 21st. But um, our target, based on the pace that we set for ourselves would be by finishing everything by August 30th, meaning we're actually a little bit ahead of schedule, maybe too much ahead of schedule. And we, we could take it a bit easy, pace ourselves a bit more to make sure that we're kind of going along with this projection or, you know, cheer ourselves up, add a little bit more to our workload. We're going to hit our, our uh, we're going to finish our task load early. So that's what this is showing us here. Just basically projecting your productivity based on the quantity of tasks in this case that we've finished so far. The actual measurement again is pulling off of tasks because that's what we've choos chosen. If we had time estimates, which I don't think I have any in this workspace, um, well, maybe we have some, you'd be able to see what we have here. So here we have time estimate. We haven't been tracking any time. So it's not showing that we're getting any closer. Whereas um, if we were, we would this is what we want it to look like. So that is the burn down widget. Again, we're looking at all these under the sprints area here. So we did burn up, burn down. Next we're on cumulative flow. Cumulative flow is pretty cool. It shows um, changes over time to, in this case, we choose our source once again, choose what areas we're pulling from, choose our time range again, and we measure our tasks. So here we go. We've got, we're gonna, we're gonna choose once again, our status as tasks, and we're gonna group by, well, let's keep it. We aren't gonna group it by status type. This would simplify our view to only show the categories of statuses. So not started, in progress, done, and closed are four general categories of statuses versus if I toggle that off, it'll show me the specific status name. So if I have, you know, um, being recorded, video edited, video published, all of those statuses are all considered active. It'll show me all of them if I have this toggled off. This chart is so boring, but I promise it can be very cool. Um, what this will show is over time, how much work do we have in each stage or each status of our workflow? So over time, we should see more and more things leave the gray status and become purple. And eventually that purple is going to crawl up as we have more and more things at an in-progress status. So that's what the cumulative flow is. It's pretty nice to, again, pat yourself on the back to show how you are progressively chipping away at that big 
in this case, gray to-do list. So finally, we're at our velocity chart, which is the total amount of work done in two or more sprints. I think we can kind of think of this as our average stuff completed. <laughs> um, so here we can choose again, our name, our source, our list, basically our locations that we're pulling from. We can choose the time range that we're looking at and the amount of work. So time range would be, you know, how, how long are we looking to pull this average from? We could choose the last three months in this case. Um, and how are we deciding what's a unit of work? In this case, again, number of tasks. We decide what is considered complete because this is counting how much work is done. Are we okay with things just being done or would we rather them be fully closed? Um, I think at this point I need to explain the difference between done and closed, even though this is a bit of a tangent, but basically let's just, let's just go in here and I'll show you the difference. If we open up statuses in ClickUp, there are three, well, really four categories of statuses, one of which I don't have active right now in this workspace. We have a not started status type, which you can turn on or turn off. In this case, this workspace has it off, but that could be something that would appear above active statuses. And it's something like idea that would be a not started status. Then we have active statuses, things that are in progress in some way. Then we have done statuses, which are things that are, you know, here we go. They're, they're not going to be marked as overdue, but they're not exactly done, done. <laughs> and finally, we have completed, which are things that are completely, completely done and will be hidden by default. You're seeing three here, but there are actually four, like I said, not started, active, done, and closed, four categories of statuses, regardless of what names you actually put to the stages within them. So if I were to say publish, for example, Maybe I'm no longer worried about due dates at that point, and that's considered done to me, even though it's not done done. Um, we could have that status here. If you wanted to turn on that not started status that I was talking about, you'd want to go in here to Click Apps, and this is in settings, and we wouldn't want to look for not started. There are so many options in here. Turn that on, so we'll have that group. Statuses, I don't know why I'm missing that. We are looking at statuses, and we now see that there is a not started status here, which is gonna default to your first status. We've got our active statuses, our done, and our closed. So that's the four categories. Now they're all visible and whatever. That ties into dashboard zone. Make sure that you know about that. But here we are in um, the velocity chart, and it's asking us to say, all right, we're gonna be keeping track of the average of how much gets done. What do you wanna consider done? We can choose either just the closed category or done. Um, once it hits done, that's considered done. We get to choose that here. I'll choose done at this point. So again, that's the velocity chart. You can see the velocity is that, I'm assuming that average number that is done. And we can see um, grouped by list how much have been finished in each day. You can see the six I just frantically checked off this morning. So that is the velocity chart. All right, now we're still in sprint land here. We've got two more cycle time and lead time. These are not gonna be very informative charts just because of the data I have in here. So let me just explain what they are here. Rolling average from date placed in active status. Wonderful. <laughs> and then uh, rolling average from date created. So in this cycle time widget, we are looking at how long it takes something to complete from the time it is active. So if I go back into here, you'll see kind of some of the, the pieces beyond this, including our sample period. So basically, how often do we want those dots to plot? I could probably do this as less often, and we'll have more dots and more of a bumpy chart. Um, and again, do we count closed or done as complete? And yep, here we go. So I'm going to refresh that chart and we will see it here. So let me actually uh, make sure I'm clear on that. Cycle time, lead time. Lead time is from the time it's considered, it is created, no matter what status it is in, from creation to finish, how long does that take? And cycle time is similar, except it's only looking at once it's in a started status. So we talked about that not started status just recently. Once it's in the started status, how long does it take to finish? That's probably a much more useful chart for most people, especially if you think about something like content creation, where you might have an idea and it could take a long time before you decide to take action on that idea. Because I don't know about you, but most of my ideas are not good ones. Um, so that's where that cycle time would come in. If you just care about how long it takes to go from beginning to end from whenever you create that task, which could be applicable for something like sales and CRM based usage, um, you would want to use this lead time. All of the functions look pretty much the same. And uh, there you go. So um, oh, and one thing you'll notice that's slightly different between these lead time, cycle time, they look pretty darn similar. Um, between the two that I have pre-made here is just the units on the bottom. So do I have it showing every week or do I have it showing every few days? Um, not much different there. Finally, I want to show you status widgets here. This is going to be our fourth and final tab of the widgets I'm going to go through today. Status widgets, we have seven of them. Most of them we've already seen, so I'm going to gloss over them pretty quickly. But nonetheless, let's begin with our pie chart. Once again, we have a pie chart. Woohoo! And this time it is grouped by status, which we've already seen. So I'm not going to go into that. We've got another uh, battery chart, which we've 
already seen as well. Again, grouped by status, just like the other times we've seen this battery chart, you can group it by different things and choose to show different options should you choose to. And again, manipulate what, um, what different areas in your workspace that you want it to be pulling from, as well as have all those filtering features. These two, pretty much the same thing we've already seen twice or three times now. All right, workload by status is another bar chart. Um, what you'll find is when we're looking at this status area, these are basically the charts we've already seen, but they're kind of preset, predefined to only show you stuff around statuses. So a safe bet is if you are feeling overwhelmed about dashboards or building these widgets in general, avoiding the custom and just going through these ones might be a good way to go. So here we go, we've got that down. We've got our line chart over time. Again, we've already looked at this before and we've got a bunch of basically calculation widgets that are pre-built for you. So if we go under here under widgets, we go to statuses, we'll see these look, they even look the same as our calculation widgets, but they are predefined to be showing you in progress, closed or completed. Um, so yeah, we, we've already basically looked at how these are built, but let's pop into one just to show you. Here we see you choose your location, you choose what's included and what's not. Um, there's no filtering on this one, which is kind of interesting, but nonetheless, here it is. In almost any case, you'd be better served by using the actual calculation widget so you have all of the extra functions. But again, if you want simple, go ahead and go under statuses and get this number in progress. Um, completed similarly and closed. Again, we are seeing completed and closed back to those four categories of statuses I talked about before, the not started, active, um, done, and closed. Done would equal completed and closed would mean closed. So that's where you'll see a difference here. So if I had statuses in published, which is a done status, but it's not totally closed, we would see these two numbers being different. In this case, I do not have any real difference between what's done and what's closed because I wasn't using that status type. So these are showing the same types of things. So that is your crash course on widgets in ClickUp. I hope this kind of part one was valuable to you. If you'd like to see a part two, please do leave that in the comments below. Like I said at the onset, this is by request basically. And so if you have feedback as to what you'd like to see next, I would love to hear it in the comments. Probably not to surprise anyone, but all of your comments end up in my ClickUp where I have things triaged to help me know what content to produce. So your comments, not only do I respond to them and see them, but I also add them in and that helps weight the score as to what content I release next. Now, beyond all that stuff in terms of what's coming up, I want to also do a shameless plug here and say, if you haven't already thumbs up this video, liked it, subscribed it, click the bell so you're notified, please do that. Let's the algorithm know that you enjoy this stuff. It helps my channel a little bit here because this is a lot of work. <laughs> and um, one other thing, if you'd like to receive more content like this and you're kind of tired of searching YouTube for it, definitely check out the description below where I have a kind of a teaser into a new thing that I'm starting called Clicking Up Community. It's a place for super nerds around ClickUp, for people who are really serious about learning the tool and learning it quickly, efficiently, and effectively to learn together and learn in an accelerated way. So if you'd like more info about that, check out the description below. And this is my fourth time trying to record this intro and outro. So I'm really hoping this time works. And I hope I can truly say I will see you in the next video and not just the next recording. Goodbye. I hope.